Hello, okay, I'm gonna make a video. So hello to everybody. And uh, I made some videos that you haven't seen because I didn't finish them. There was a guy doing a video on his problems with feminism and, and I didn't finish it and so on. So, uh, but this is a video and I have a bunch of, you know, I've got my reading glasses on because I'm reading my note card. I got my, uh, some, some issues here I thought I'd talk about. I don't remember what they all are. I've just been writing about it. I didn't make a video about that. Figuring I'd put them all together. And that's what I'm doing right now. You know, and I, what I'm, my personal life isn't on this list. But yeah, I'm working really hard. And I'm glad. I'm not complaining at all. I'm glad to have some work. Uh, I feel actually a little bit like more like I have time when I'm working these long days for someone else than when I don't have a contract and I'm just trying to work on my code and get things prepared because, you know, you got to pay the rent. Um, and I was realizing now I'm feeling really nervous, but things are going okay so far. I'm paying for food, rent, so, you know, I, I shouldn't complain too much. I'm a little worried about paying my taxes, but um, we'll see how that, that goes. Okay, well, uh, one item here. Uh, not in any particular order, but uh, Thunderfoot. I was watching Thunderfoot's latest uh, Anita Sarkeesian video, and uh, the title of this this point is Thunderfoot versus the Future. You know, and I think this is a. Uh, you know, this is. Um, it's interesting because we have uh, people like uh, Sam Harris here taking uh, the uh, I hate all religions and especially Islam. Uh, line of reasoning to the masses, you know, I don't know if you've seen, there's been a, a little kerfluffle about uh, Sam Harris on Bill Maher's uh, Real Time on HBO, and, uh, you know, this, this idea that, uh, and I've seen some defenses of it, but, um, but basically, well, let's leave the Islam thing to the side for a while, I mean, basically, Thunderfoot is, is just so funny, because he's so obtuse about the subject, I mean, Let's just face it. Video games are like pure pulp entertainment. Now, maybe you think that's the way they ought to be, but in any other medium you uh, that develops over time, it starts to be 10, 20, 30, 40 years old, you start to have a, you know, a critique will develop in the culture and whatnot. And, and some of it's predictable, okay? Now, if all the movies that you had, and it was arguably has been like this at points in, in time. But if all the films you had were just these action flicks of the lowest kind, the, 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 the least redeemable, that are just about gun, foo, and, and, you know, and, and uh, adolescent sexual fantasies, um, you know, people would not have trouble noticing that, well, you know, it's not really much to defend there. You can enjoy those movies, but it's it's like, you know, where where is the Seven Samurais of video games? You know? So, it's not a particularly defensible medium at the, at the point. It's, it's pretty obvious what Anita is complaining about, and she has such an easy go of it because there's just so much of that. That's what the video games are all about. Now, there's all kinds of reasons... But, you know, the latest video I'd seen, who knows if we'll make another one before you see this one, so, but it was the one on, uh, he, he read her master's thesis. Like, it's all just a joke. You know, and, and I saw Noel Plum also, uh, who's, who's generally a reasonable guy, try to make a, a criticism, or he did make, come up with some criticism of, of Anita Sarkeesian. Um... You know, as if games, you know, there's nothing game could developers could do to please her. She's just impossible to please. Tell us how we could please you. And it's kind of like, um, you know, like this issue, a lot of people are like, well, most of the, or, or uh, War Corpse is this guy I've, I've found. And it's like, well, most of the violence is the brutal, ridiculous, unsubstantiated, unwarranted uh, violence is uh, against men. So there's no problem. Well, if you really just stopped and thought a little bit about what, you know, the strict father model of morality is to politics and this idea of the patriarchy, 
And you'd understand that the male on male violence is also a part of that cognitive schema, right? So, you know, for example, I bought um, and played uh, Call of Duty. Uh, I like online games, I like being able to play, uh, you know, capture the flag type stuff. Um, you know, it's like paintball, whatever. I, I like that kind of thing. So, uh, I have an open source game that's, that's in the Quake style that, that I play. And, um, you know, if you, uh, you know, want to play those kind of games, there's nothing wrong with that, I don't think. Um, and I think it could be cathartic in, in some of the over top, over the top stuff is, you know, it's just fine, you know, all, all in good fun. But when I played, um, you know, so I mostly got that game, and it was for the Wii to um, to play online, you know, uh, which is a different kind of a game than the, than the story um, that you that you're put through when you're in single player. Now, and one part of the story that you go through in the first Call of Duty, I forget how the the thing's name are. They all called Call. I guess it was Call of Duty Black Ops. Excuse me was, um, you know, at one point, there's a cutscene, and in the cutscene, you're interrogating this guy, you break a window, you make him eat glass, and then it cuts back to me, the player, and I'm supposed to punch him in the face a couple times. And that's it, that's the whole thing. And then I get past that back to the regular running around with your guns, shooting things. And, uh, you know, might as well be laser tag at that point. But that I'm supposed to pretend to force a guy to eat glass and then punch him in the face as an interrogation technique, that's disgusting, right? And uh, to complain or make a, a, a media criticism about that is it's such a low-hanging fruit. You, you can't complain that somebody pointed that out. You know, and there's people all over going, oh, but the feminists have gone too far and Gamergate, they won't... They won't, you know, let the Gamergate dudes, you know, have their fair say on TV. It's not fair. But then when I say, uh, you know, feminism is, is a valuable thing and it, they're, they're always there working for civil rights in general, people are today, you know, I was arguing with people, I forget what thread it was in, you know, they're all like, well, name one right that, that women or, uh, you know, African Americans don't have in the law they're totally equal you know it's all done and it's just funny that um, yeah it was in Thunderfoot's video because I'd made a comment that like you know it's kind of ridiculous that you that someone would admit that for thousands of years we've we've had this structure but suddenly back in the 60s you know the baby boomers thought hey this is wrong and they solved it they just they solved it <laughs> this is over why? Well, because the laws are now even. <laughs> and yet they're complaining about things like, well, the TV doesn't give our opinion a fair time. You know, we don't get our fair time on the air. It's like, well, did you lose a right? No, you have the right to be on the air. La, 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 la. Maybe you do care about outcomes. You know, maybe if, there's, if you admit that there's racism for thousands of years... And then, as a result of that, there's an ethnicity trapped in poverty. And then you make the laws so that, oh, we're not going to, you know, we, yeah, we had laws that forced that situation uh, and overlooked crimes done to you. But we changed those laws. So it's all even now. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like, like that's, it's just solved. On the other hand, that's fine if you want to think that. But you might as well also think that's where we differ. I don't think this is solved yet. Doesn't I don't get the solved vibe off of the situation with feminism, civil rights in general, the way the world works. It's all it's pretty fucked up. And you know, a lot of people with the GamerGate thing. That's another item on here. GamerGate. Um, you know, they like to argue. Well, there's no proof that uh, these violent video games make us violent. Well, first of all. All of the research does, in fact, say that it provokes violent tendencies. So if you have no violent tendencies, then zero times 100 is still zero. And if you have 0.1 violent tendency, then times 100 is only 10 on a scale of 100, let's say. But some people are already in the violent 
tendency territory. And that brings them up to 500. And, and that's actually what the research is showing. But, but ignore that, because I personally am not saying the video games are making us, the movies are making us. No, it's a reflection of how we already are, and it's not pretty. It's not okay to me. You can love it, but I don't have to love it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a reflection. It's like their cultural subconscious splayed up on a video screen. And uh, the absolutely appropriate thing is to critique it. You know, I don't really think that changing the laws is going to affect that particular issue directly. But it is still an issue. It is still like, hey, look what you're enjoying. What does that say about the fact that you and another, you know, 40 million people are getting your kicks this way? Doesn't matter what you think. <clears throat> Look, just because, you know, I don't believe there should be thought crimes, but that doesn't mean everything you think is fine. That doesn't mean it's fine to fantasize anything you want. Well, it's fine because there's no thought crime. No, it means you don't go to jail, but it doesn't mean that you're not depraved. It just, you know, not every depraved person is going to go to jail. And I really think that the interesting thing, and this segues into the election, is that, you know, pretty much basically with Thunderfoot, nobody in those threads really wants to dis discuss this issue. Well, I shouldn't say that. There's one guy uh, who ended up wanting to discuss it. But, you know, mostly there's no discussion in those threads. And in that case, my answer is, okay, it's a culture war. You're losing it. I'm on the other side. You know, let's, let's get it on, you know. You were losing against the future. And this segues into the election because, first of all, you know, they always love to make a big deal of every election like it's the last election in the world or it's telling a trend. And really, there's a lot of cycles, and especially in midterm elections. Um, but mostly, I don't lament the loss of these Democrats because I think they're, it's like the difference, like the Republican is a guy that, or the Democrat is like a guy that's going to be the people's friend just enough to, to get his trust and then stab him in the back. And I personally, my own taste, I prefer the guy that never pretends to be your friend in the first place. So, you know, the, the Democrats are running away from liberalism. No, I don't like Obamacare and millions of other, you know, they, they don't run on minimum wage, which then passed even in conservative states. They don't, because they don't really believe in it. My, my belief has been for a long time that pretty much uh, liberalism as we know it, establishment liberalism, is like Thomas Jefferson. It's like a guy that believes in the slave plantation way of doing things, but just wants to be a little bit nicer to his slaves and thinks, yeah, they could learn to read, and why not teach them a skill like, uh, you know, blacksmithing? And, uh, you know, what kind, of a, what kind of a friend really is that? Uh, but also the issue is, it's like, okay, they did not solve back in the 60s, uh, you know, the civil rights issue. However, there was a cultural shift, and there is no going back to the other side of it, okay? So, uh, in a sense, certain things are bound to happen. We might blow ourselves up before it happens. You know, we might uh, stab each other in the street. There might be chaos for other reasons. But basically, you know, we're not going to go back to before it. So it doesn't mean that we don't need to keep working on things like civil rights, but if anybody hearkening back to a day when it wasn't even an issue and they should just shut up and you, you can't even critique media on the basis of its use of tired old formula that, you know, belong in fairy tales and should just be left to fairy tales, um, that's not going to happen, all right? The future is coming, all right? The, the future is coming. The, the, the eyes have been squinted open, and while we're confused by this rush of light, um, if you get your eyes all the way open, I think you'll see that um, we're not going back, okay? We're not going back. We might go forward and die from it, because that's the other thing I would grant to the people, you know, going historically back, that we're fighting the whole uh, cultural... Um, 
evolution that was going on at the time and they're saying hey this is going to lead to all kinds of chaos and look it has it has led to chaos they were correct it's led to chaos now me i'm kill it or cure it let's go forward i don't want to be back in the inquisition to avoid having to deal with uh you know rape porn in video games i don't want to do that um i'd rather deal with the the rape porn of grand theft auto and, and just move forward and see if people get bored. Or I'd be happy if, you know, video games, because I've worked in video games in my 20s, and, and I believe it can be a real medium. I left it because it was just a bunch of murder simulations. I did not want to make murder simulations. I believe it can be much more than that. I believe video games, you know, it could be a place in it where we have virtual environments, where we test out new types of government, new ideas, new ways of thinking about things. Um, and I would like to see... I have no problem with Grand Theft Auto, actually, except for that the rest of the industry, you know, it should just be, it should be as much of, uh, of the whole spectrum of gaming as, as a movie like that is the whole spectrum of movies, right? And, and I also like dark humor, dark movies, and, you know, you can make a movie like a Requiem for a Dream, and it's a real film, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real work of uh, creative energy deserving of being called art whether you can handle the images in it or it's too hard for you that's a matter of personal taste it deserves a respect as something you know someone didn't just do it um, as a piece of entertainment you know there's statements and positions and philosophy and the aspects of art in it right so um, it's not that I mind particularly the images, but I just mind the, the, the cheap way. That doesn't mean I want to make it illegal to make, you know, bad art. But I do want people going, oh, that's bad art, that's bad art, that's bad art. I want that. I do. I want that. I want you to have to, to hear that I don't think Call of Duty uh, needed to force me into a situation where I punch some guy in the face with a mouthful of glass because of some stupid political difference our leaders had personally so uh, yeah that segues into the election which is just like you know look the democrats are fucking things up you have pot getting legal you have minimum wage you have most people actually you know liking the ability to go to a doctor and things like this and yet they're all still so confused the same people that would vote for the minimum wage will vote for a republican that's going to do everything they can to block it but the democrats aren't really any better because they're insincere progressives they're not really progressives the, the, the democratic establishment they, as far as I can see, believes the same thing as the Republican establishment. They think that, oh, raising the minimum wage is dangerous. They just also think, but you should be nice to the people. They're more sympathetic. They're more guilty. You know, it's like the guilty soft plantation owner versus the hard and ruthless uh, plantation owner. And um, so it's hard for me to worry or think too much right now about that. When we're living in a system where bankers have violated the law. I mean, J.P. Morgan has probably violated, you know, I don't know, 30 provisions from the, the uh, Securities and Exchange Acts or whatever they were called, of the, I think, in the 30s that they came up with. They violated those laws, and nobody's going to jail. They are above the law. I'm supposed to worry about whether it's Republicans or Democrats? Well, it does make a difference to me. I'd rather have Democrats, but it's a really cold comfort. And I don't even think the lesser of two evils does justice to, to how futile uh, that decision has become when both parties are going to say, you know, our country's falling apart and, you know, we're having trouble, you know, keeping our roads without potholes and keeping our water clean and, and this kind of thing. But we're going to spend billions of dollars spying on you guys to make sure you're not terrorists against your own country, you know. Or, or some cop's going to shoot some black guy, and whether it's justified or not, uh, it's not justified to bring out military force against Americans. When I was a kid, that was supposed to be only something you'd see in the Soviet, the evil so empire of the Soviet Union, you know. And I'm still in a world where when the Soviet Union does anything like that, uh, 
he would see this outrage. And yet, local police departments, and when you saw it in the Boston uh, Marathon bombing, you see it in Ferguson, they're just going to pull out the military. They're at war with us, you idiots. They are at war with us. How, how much more clear could it be? Right? <laughs> so, there's social trends, is what I'm saying, that just continue to roll along. And who, who knows where they'll go? You know, people are interesting, let's say. They're, they're interesting. So, you know, as they become more enlightened, the bumps along the road, there can be some really uh, unenlightened things that appear quite unenlightened. And I think, you know, the state of video games is a perfect example. I mean, I think it was enlightened to open up our minds to uh, different kinds of story and to and allowing, um, you know, the hard aspects of life and crime and to allow those into our mass media, as has happened, especially in games uh, and also in movies, but especially in games. I think that's good, but then it rolls around and, and for a while you're just dealing with, okay, yeah, it was enlightened to allow depravity, but, you know, it's still depraved. So what else? Um, oh, I was watching uh, some some. Uh, I've been watching some very stuff. I watched a movie on the, the life of Christ by some Christians, and I was watching William Lane Craig for, uh, for what it's worth. Um, and you know the thing is, I've been thinking a lot about this atheism stuff, and you know it's like to me, it doesn't matter. I, I don't think there's any real. I think that. To not believe in a myth is real. Like, to not believe that Santa Claus really is in the North Pole is probably a more sane thing. To not believe in these gods and these myths is literally true is probably a more sane thing. But believing in the metaphorical value of myths, for example, the Greek myths, they're great. Everybody should read them. You can learn some morals and, and ideas from those myths, right? If you believe them literally, you know, that might be a little bit too much. But, you know, they're, they're not valueless. And there's, it's not like there's no lessons in there. So being an atheist, you know, I mean, I think, have we not seen from YouTube atheism that that does not make you more moral. It does not make you smarter, <laughs> even. And what it really comes down to is character. And, and, and that proves that there's something beyond what we think our worldviews are that tells that is really driving us, right? Because a person of good character, you know, will use whatever worldview they've decided to avow um, for the good, as for for as much good. They will use that to inspire them. A person that believes in an afterlife and a God will use the life of Jesus uh, to as as to help motivate them to to be more selfless, right? A person that doesn't believe in afterlife will say, well, we only have the here and now. We should do what we can to make the here and now better. You know, a, a person of good character will find in their worldview the motivation to do things that good character does. Right? So there's a worldview deeper, that means. Another worldview. A meta worldview. Or a meta meta worldview. That guides people's actual interactions with other people. That is not at all represented in the simil, in this uh, simple rather uh, atheism versus theism. It's really every you know bad character versus good character, and you know what is good character? Let, let's pretend like that can't be defined. Let's let's just, let's just pretend we don't know the difference between good and bad character. Like you don't make that decision in, in right or wrong uh, with the people you know or decide to befriend, and uh, that'll make this point shorter because I don't really want to argue with you on that. I already dealt with Gamergate. It's funny to me that Gamergate's risen up but you know now any old Twitter internet thing it goes on Twitter suddenly it's like oh there's been a million tweets. Uh, this, we, we're allowed to cover this like it's news instead of something important. So uh, I got in an argument with some dude about the speed of light and I was just like hey you know what the speed of light isn't really constant it changes in different mediums, you know, so like a photon going through a crystal, it's going less than the speed of light, and a photon in a vacuum would be going C, um, but according to quantum mechanics, there is no complete vacuum, so light is actually always going less than this constant C, 
And that's what I said, and the guy's just calling me a dumbass. And you, yes, of course it changes speed, but it's still constant, you dumbass. <laughs> How did this become a holy cow to this dude? We must say it's constant. Yes, I admit it changes speed, but, you know, it's still a constant. No, C is a constant, and it's the maximum speed in the universe, and it's the speed light almost goes. But in reality, if you measure the speed of a photon in any medium of which everything is a medium, it won't actually be going C. So if you want to call that a constant, okay, but why? Why? Because you heard that and it made you smarter or something. I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. Um, especially since it's no, it's no, uh, you know, and when I was taking physics, I'm like, what? That was news to me. And why? Like it's some mystery. Well, you know, you can do the, the electro, I mean, Light is an electromagnetic wave, and the speed of its propagation is affected when it's in the ma matrix of, of atoms, you know, traveling through the molecules that make up a crystal, uh, you know, it's in a different environment, because those atoms have magnetic properties, and, and the result is that it slows down the light. And everything does, slows it down a little, so it's almost like light wants to go at sea, and if it ever had a pure vacuum, it would, but because of quantum mechanics, there's no such thing as a pure vacuum. So even light doesn't quite go that speed. Sorry. Now you could pull in relativistic, you know, mathematics. Maybe it's going the speed of light from its own point of view or something. Well, then do that, okay? Please get out your calculator and your math book and your engineering graph paper and prove that because, you know, People have done a lot of work on that. You can't just talk at your ass on that and be taken seriously by a serious person. Um, oh, he's going to talk about the comet landing. How awesome is that? I'm really happy because I remember for 15 years them talking about the comet thing, and then I remember them launching it, and then here we are, whatever, 10 years later, and we have actually seen what a comet looks like. I have read so much about these dirty snowballs and what they look like and how they behave and everything else and we have now actually seen pictures with visible light and they're going to get all sorts of extra measurements from it to to be able to tell us more things about its composition and of course the composition of the early solar system and uh, this is what I think mankind should be spending its time on I think we could do so much of that kind of thing if we didn't spend you know ten uh, uh, or excuse me, a hundred billion dollars a year uh, in Iraq, and 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 and, and uh, fifty billion year uh, a year blowing up Afghanistan. I think you know when people tell me, you know, and they're so pessimistic about the world, and it's like, yeah, well, there's a lot to be pessimistic about. But when you tell me it's an insolvable problem, you're just buying like the bush line. That's what they all want us to do. Well, there's no way to solve it. We just have to live it this way. No, do the math. Go, you got the internet. Go see how much money the world spends on war. And unless you really believe that war is necessary, boy, we get things done with it, then you have to admit we are wasting plenty of money. More money, I mean... In the last 10 years, the money we've spent on war, more than enough to feed the world, get clean water to, you know, rural Asia and Africa, and on and on, right? These are not expensive, unsolvable problems. It's just the profiteers want you to think that, and you cooperate, many of you. Um, oh, I had Sam Harris here. Did I talk about how... Uh, yeah, he's doing the Thunderfoot uh, thing mainstream. I guess I did talk about that. Yeah, it's like, uh, I'm an atheist. I hate religion, but especially Islam. So violent. The center of Islam is a bunch of jihadists. They're not at the fringe like you might think. They're in the center. Whereas when, you know, a Christian does something crazy because of and says, it was because of my Christianity I killed my family. That's why I want to bomb another country. And it's like, oh, those guys, you know, bad actors, you know, they're misusing their religion. Um, it, probably the most out of place, one of these things does not belong. Um, 
I was thinking about how, you know, I don't like people getting pigeonholed in roles. I like to think of people as individuals. It's, it's really my main reason against uh, racism, because even if you had a culture uh, or even a, you know, genetic tendency um, for some sort of behavior, and so that 90% of some group is a certain way, I'm an individualist. I'm looking for that 10%. So when I meet somebody, I'm like, I'm not going to assume you like the 90%. And then add on top of that, that usually the way those groups are characterized has very little to do with them. Um, so, I, so I don't like roles. I don't like fitting people into roles. I like breaking, you know, iconoclasm is the word of the day for, for this kind of thing about people playing the roles. And yet, um, the way humans think through metaphor involves the setting of roles. And what made me want to talk about it was that I was realizing, you know, in this job that I've got right now, it's, uh, you know, I have to organize. They, they have this technology and they need to be able to automate it and do it regularly. And we have to develop it. And part of that is organizing the development and the people that are already at this company that I'm contracting for. And so I was thinking about roles and how important it is, and then it just it, it, it struck me because it's like I'm very against this kind of uh, uh, that a person should play a role. You know, you're the mother. Mothers do a certain thing, so that's that. You know, no, you could be an individual, a unique kind of mother. That's fine. Um, but when it comes to work or getting something done practical, it's very useful to adopt a role. It clarifies what's going on, and if you have the right you know, if five people are cooperating on something, you've got a complex real-world problem, you know, you need to set up the five roles so that they're around the problem, so they can triangulate on the problem, right? And that means the people that adopt those roles and say, yeah, I'll take this role, and so on, they have to play that role well. They have to be careful and, and take it seriously because it's part of a, a logical diagram meant to... Uh, deconstruct you know the problem into solvable parts so um, so yeah the, to me that realization is you know there's some uh, backflow back into the regular life but on the other hand I think that the answer that I have to that is that no we don't need that kind of, of role playing or uh, role fitting or, or square peg pounding in our lives this is my libertarianism in the in the true sense of I believe in in personal liberty is something we need to invent and study and figure out how we can do it you know that's why I'm not an anti-tax kind of libertarian because as far as I could see having an internet uh, 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 well an internet as well but having an interstate highway system helps my liberty because even if I don't have a car I have public property where I can if I want to I can um, Forrest Gump run from one coast to another. That's liberty. I'm allowed to move. That's a measurable kind of liberty. I'm allowed to change my position to another position on the globe. Right. <coughs> so, um, I think this is the issue. So, it's not that I'm against following rules. It's just that I think that while there's a space for that, we should be able to choose those roles and go in and out of them for specific purposes. And in our personal life, we should not be forced to play roles. And this is one of the ways that we can define what liberty truly means, right? Because I, I, liberty cannot mean that you get to harm another person, but it can mean that you can't be forced into a particular kind of role. You know, that if, if, if uh, you are from a talented family that, that uh, they all play for the symphony uh, and you don't, that you're not a failure because you're in this role of musician and you're not really good at it. No, that is not liberty. You should be able to choose your own role and see how you do in that. So, all right. Only 34 minutes. Short video. Cheers.